the process of replication is very different between a eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic cell. In this video, we would look at the difference in terms of eukaryotic and prokaryotic replication and focus on the part of the replication process which is initiation and try to delineate these two processes and try to appreciate the similarities and dissimilarities between them. Let's look at prokaryotic initiation of replication and then we move to eukaryotic replication initiation and try to differentiate between the two. In prokaryotes, the DNA is freely moving inside the cytoplasm, right? And there is no nuclear organization. So the replication starts in the replication origin, a specific sequence where the replication bubble forms. Let's look at this process in a bit more details. So here, a 245 base pair region is known as origin of replication or OEC. Looking at the sequences in a lot more details, we would find there are specific island of sequences known as a 13 mar repeat sequences which has a sequence like this and a 9 mar repeat sequence there are four tandems of 9 mar sequences with a sequence feature of this now it turns out that in 9 mar sequences specific proteins such as dna a binds as a consequence this origin of replication the region which is around the origin of replication they form a loop you can see nicely the dna a is bound to four nine mer sequence and they formed a loop this is called the initiator selection phase so the initiator selection means the initiation machinery has to be assembled in a proper way and that's why you need to select a particular region or a se sequence feature near which the, the initiation would take place. After that there are specific components such as so these components are known as DNA A which really loops the DNA. Then there is DNA C which is nothing but an auxiliary protein which loads DNA B. Now DNA B are hexameric uh, helicase proteins which unwind the DNA near the origin. So you have seen the origin of replication is now opening up. Unwinding of DNA takes place and DNA strands are getting separated by this helicase activity. There are guide rays which are ensuring that the strands which are getting separated they don't get supercoiled so the supercoiling problem is taken care of by chirase and specific polymerase such as tna polymerase get recruited with the helicases and they start polymerizing the replication bubble mostly in prokaryotes one replication bubble forms and that spread in both direction to replicate the entire genome of that bacteria now Looking at this process in a bit more details, we would understand that the key feature of the replication initiation would differ in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. After initiation, DNA polymerase 3, especially which is the prevalent polymerase in present in prokaryote, would take part in the polymerization reaction or strand synthesis reaction. With the help of RNA primer, there would be a primer formation, and followed by that, DNA ball 3 would perform its work. And it all works like a complex DNA B, SSB proteins, poultry all work like a complex. So, without going to the further details of replication uh, elongation process or the synthesis process, we would try to look at the eukaryotic replication initiation. And try to appreciate the difference between the two. So in case of eukaryotes the process is very different because the DNA remains in format of nucleosome inside nucleus and with the development of 
advanced imaging techniques such as electron microscopy, scientists found that there are multiple replication origin marked here in the red arrows in the same in the same cell. So replication begins in multiple locations and the whole chromosome replication takes place but only once in one cell cycle. So we have to understand eukaryotic cell cycle, putting it into a context of cell biology and cell division. Let's look at the first step, which is the replication site selection, which is pretty much similar in case of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. But this particular replication site selection takes place at G1 phase, where a pre-replication complex or pre-RC whose main component is origin of replication complex ORC binds to this selected site and this uh, forms the pre-replicative complex and the pre-replicative complex is present at the G1 phase but at this point of time it is in an inactivated state so the origin cannot fire or from the origin replication cannot start at G1 phase at this point of time two molecules CDC6 and CTD1 would bind to the ORC complex. These two molecules work like a helicase loader and they have defined function. Actually their level is regulated in such a fashion that it would regulate initiation of the replication and ensure that only replication can take place once not twice in a cell cycle. So as they are helicase loader, they can load the MCM helicase onto its position. Now at S phase, we know the replication takes place in eukaryotes, right? In the S phase, what happens is specific S phase cyclin, such as cyclin E, CDK2, they phosphorylate these origin of replication complex. And the phosphorylated complex is activated. It gives us a start signal to start the replication and helicase to act on the strands and unwind the strand. So this is when the CDC6 and CTD1 is falling off from this origin of replication complex or pre-replication complex. And this is the time when you can say the pre-replication complex is activated and firing. Firing means the helicase, which is MCM2 and 7 known in eukaryotes, they are moving away and forming the replication bubble. Several other associated proteins such as CDC45, RPA protein which are very equivalent to the SSB proteins are bound in this situation. Now multiple replication bubble could form but the replication event takes place only once. How it is happening? It turns out just after the replication of a new strand is done this pre-replicative complex is getting associated but it remains in an inactivated state because at a phosphorylated state the CTD1 and CDC6 which I have introduced earlier as a helicase loader cannot get recruited to the pre-replicative complex as they are phosphorylated. Now their phosphorylation state is actually maintained by a cyclin CDK complex which is the M phase cyclin or maturation promoting factor, which is a complex of cyclin B and CDK1. Now what happens is these maturation promoting factor maintain a high level of phosphorylation of CDC6 and CTD1. As a result, they cannot get associated with ORCs. But the, at the end of G2 phase and the end of M mitotic phase and the beginning of the G1 phase, the cyclin B is gone because cyclin B would be degraded by anaphase promoting complex. When the kinase level is low, phosphatase can act on these helicase loader proteins and dephosphorylate them. Now once dephosphorylated, they can reassociate it with the pre-replicative complex and wait for the S phase cyclin to phosphorylate them and that is how they can fire again. So this is this mechanism ensures that replication takes place only once. So we can clearly understand there is a ratiometric balance between the kinase and the phosphatase activity which ensures the helicase loaders are phosphorylated or dephosphorylated in a restricted window, right? That is why we only have replication initiated at S phase, not in other phases. So in S phase, what happens is the phosphorylation of these 
helicase loader takes place which help the firing of the origin but in other phase other than S phase these helicase loader proteins are always in a phosphorylated state until and unless they are dephosphorylated they cannot reassociate with the complex and form a mature pre-replication complex and that is how in eukaryote restriction the initiation phase is very much restricted into the S phase and the re-replication does not occur replication process is energy costly and futile and also the polyploidy, polyploidy of the cells might get perturbed if replication occurs this is how using a beautiful molecular mechanisms using kinase and phosphatase cell ensure that replication in eukaryote takes place only once that's pretty much conclude the video about this topic I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'm also present in An Academy, which is India's biggest learning platform. And I'm a member there. So you can always access to my course and interact one to one with me. If you want to interact with me, you can take a plus subscription, which is pretty cheap. You can take a monthly subscription and then you can use my referral code AP10 for getting 10% discount. So hope to see you guys soon. And do let me know in comments how do you like my video. Thank you.